Hello everyone and welcome back to the Sam Beast Consulting YouTube channel. As always, my name is David Foxen and before we start, please just go and check that you are subscribed for all of our ITAM goodness and future videos that we have coming out. And also don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed the content and want to see more ITAM related content from us here. So one of the most frequent questions that I get asked on LinkedIn or via my website, yes I have a website, a few people have contacted me through that, but it's mainly on LinkedIn and through emails, is how do you keep an asset management database accurate? It is so easy for it to go inaccurate and outdated and unreliable so quickly. So how do you keep the assets within your AMDB accurate, relevant, and in almost as real time as you can? There are five things that I'm gonna share with you today that are my top tips for keeping your AMDB accurate. Tip number one, number one, if you're gonna do anything, do this, and it's make sure that you embed the asset management database update steps within your hardware asset management and your IT asset management processes. So when you're building out your policies and your process flows, your races, your work instructions, etc., make sure that whenever you need there to be an asset management database update, whether that's a status change, procurement information added, life cycle information added, a user assigned to it, IT asset disposition info, whatever it is, Make sure when you're documenting and detailing your processes that you have a call out that this is the point that you're going to go into the AMDB and update these particular fields. Have it as kind of like a, an open box kind of like that. That looks terrible. Uh, but you can have on there change assigned to update procurement data, update lifecycle information, whatever updates need to happen as part of that process. Make sure they are fully embedded into your processes. It will take some time to onboard it if you're making changes. Do that education and awareness sessions with those stakeholders that you want to update the asset management database and update those assets and that data for you. But once they start get going, you've published the documentation, you've got the accompanying work instructions and racing matrixes, it's just going to become second nature to them. Whenever they get stuff purchased, they're going to be adding it into the AMDB because that's what they do. That's the process you've defined. When they receive an asset back, they're going to change the state to in stock from in use and they're going to remove the user details. When they redeploy something, they're going to change it from in stock available to in use and assigned to the user. Having it embedded in those processes, in the policy, in your documentation. And when I say embedded in your policy, I'm not meaning detailing all the updates you need to do. Just a reference that the AMDB updates are critical to your IT asset management and your AMDB's success and general usage and trustworthiness within your organization. Step number two that I would suggest that you do is one of the common bits of feedback we get are from ITAM people that have gone into an organization and are met with a brownfield site that they can't greenfield, AKA it's a mess, it's outdated, there's missing data, but the client or the organization will not reset it and start again and re-import stuff. They want you to fix the data that's in there. Typically what's missing is procurement information, lifecycle information, states and substates, etc. So the first thing that I would do to start filling in these gaps is get an internal procurement data dump and also contact the hardware vendor or the reseller that the customer or the organization has been buying hardware from to get a full inventory of all of the procurement that you've purchased. This includes the serial numbers, order dates, PO references, cost, warranty expiry dates, I'm also talking about invoice dates, invoice references, additional support, everything that they can possibly provide you, request it from the vendors, and also look at your internal systems as well. Your procurement tools, they may not have serial numbers assigned to it, which is where it can get tricky, but if they do, great, you've got a lot of information in there as well. Once you have that information, either bulk import it or manually add it onto your assets, this starts to create that reliable, actionable data. When you're putting in the procurement information in there, you can start to calculate the schedule retirement dates and the life cycle of that asset. You can start doing depreciation as well. 
The hardware vendor will also have, like I said, your warranty or your end of support dates as well, which is very important for then defining your hardware refresh cycles and also understanding the age of your fleet and the scheduled retirement dates. So put your procurement information in there, put your warranty information and the extended support end dates in there. And now as a byproduct of that, you can set when your depreciation starts, which is when you normally get the order received date on the inventory report from the hardware vendor. That can be, can be the trigger point for starting depreciation. You can set your depreciation rules, SL three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, whatever it is for that particular asset type. And based on the purchase date, you can also factor in your scheduled retirement date, which is X amount of years from your purchase date. So already just by getting this procurement data, sure the state substates assigned user, et cetera, may not be accurate quite yet, but you're able to start to build that picture and understand that life cycle for that asset using the procurement data to build out the life cycle data. However, if you are still struggling to get that life cycle data from the vendor, from your resellers, your internal procurement tools, then my third bit of advice is to go through the vendor's warranty portals. A lot of hardware vendors have fantastic warranty portals where you simply put in the serial number of the asset that you want to find out information for and it will tell you when it was purchased, warranty start date, warranty end date, the level of coverage, even sometimes the location it was, it was shipped to. Really valuable information that if you can't get the procurement data or you're still waiting on that for a long time, start looking up some serial numbers. A lot of these portals are laid to do it in batches as well so you don't just have to do copy, paste, enter, that's the information, AMDB updates, copy, paste, enter, that's the information, AMDB updates. Some of them allow you to do multiple assets at a time. And again, it gives you a really good foundation to start building out the data within your asset management database. And as you move forward to maintain the accuracy, you can then use your AMDB, set up some filters and find some assets that are missing procurement information, missing lifecycle data, and then use these tools to fill in those gaps. And before you know it, when you look at this on a weekly or a monthly basis, you'll find that you've only got a handful of devices that have no procurement information, that have no lifecycle data or no cost, etc. that you then need to go in and update. And it becomes a much more manageable process in order to be able to do that. And remember point number one about those processes, you've already got aim to be updates embedded in there. So as you go along through the different stages of that hardware assets life cycle, you've got your key stakeholders or your ITAM teams changing states, changing substates, assigning users, popular, doing all that BAU aim to be updates that are required for it to be that central source of truth and for it to be accurate and updated. Tip number four would be if you're still struggling to get that procurement information and the cost, which obviously triggers depreciation, and you may have some other repair rules based on the amount of value that's been depreciated, then the other bit of advice that I would give you is to look for that particular model's price at release. So what spec have you got? What's the model code? Google it and find out when that device was released with that spec, how much was it? It's not gonna be 100% accurate for what you actually paid for it, but if you're really struggling for that procurement information to start those depreciation costs, to start those rules, to even understand roughly how much this stuff costs, then use those recommended retail prices or release prices. And if you type in the model, if you type in the spec, a lot of a lot of the hardware vendors have lists of what it was when it was released in 2014, 2023, 2020, etc. It will show you what the recommended retail price, what the list price was at that point. Or even you can go on some websites and you click on it and you can see the sale price, but you can also see the RRP. Not ideal, it's not a, you know, a bulletproof way of doing it. It may not be 100% accurate, but at least you're populating the asset management database with financial information so you can start to understand how much remaining value is in the asset. And then when you get the accurate procurement information, then you can go in and update the costs in your AMDB and it'll all reconfigure all of, the, all of the depreciation rules. And finally, number five. So you've got your processes, it, AMDB updates is embedded in your processes, it is a non-negotiable. You must update the AMDB throughout all of the life cycle processes within there. You've got your procurement data. You've been looking through warranty portals. You've been looking through um, recommended retail prices. And the last bit of advice that I would give you is look at implementing advanced shipment notices and IT asset disposition reports on a regular basis. So there's two things in there, both at the end of the life cycle. 
ASNs, advanced shipment notices. These are things you get from the hardware vendors or your reseller that is a shipment notice that they have sent you this list of serial numbers under this PO on this date at this cost. You can leverage this to start putting assets into your AMDB before they've even reached your organization or come online or been imaged or anything like that. You can create the asset in the AMDB as part of your onboarding, as part of your procurement process. Say it's on order, this is the make, this is the model, this is the spec, this is who it might even be reserved for, or this is the expected stockroom location. You can put all of that into place in advance so that when it's received, it can go through the hardware goods receive process, it can go through all of the deployment preparation and your stakeholders already have the asset already in the AMDB with all the procurement and lifecycle data in there. And they just need to go and assign the user, put the asset tag in there and update the state and substate combination. And then if you move to the end of the life, you can do something similar with ITAD reporting. ITAD vendors typically have portals uh, where you get all of the information and can download exports. However, you can also request that on a monthly basis, you get a complete list of everything that's been processed that month or what they have received. If you're looking at things that they have received but have not yet processed yet, again, you can update your AMDB, create a custom stock room for your ITAD provider so it doesn't get into all your other stock reports. Remember, if it's gone to the ITAD provider and you've not had the end of life certificates, data destruction, resale, disposal, you haven't formally retired it yet, wait until you've received those, then you can put it as retired and whatever the relevant substate should be. So put it in stock, create the relevant uh, custom stock room, if you like, uh, for that particular ITAD pro provider and get these reports on a monthly basis. It may be a quiet week and you've not had many ITAD collections. It may be a really busy week, but it helps give you that information so you don't forget by not going into a portal, downloading this, getting this file, getting this certificate, etc. You get it on a monthly basis from your ITAD provider in Excel with the relevant data that you need for your aim to be updates like the disposal reference if you've got that resale reference data destruction references certificates all of that good stuff you can start to make sure that you've got as part of your processes those monthly ITAD AMDB updates. So you don't miss anything when something's published in a portal, you're getting it into your emails, you're getting that Excel list and you're being proactive and updating your AMDB. There's obviously a lot more things that you can do to keep on top of your asset management database. It depends on how many resources you have, how much time you have, what technologies you've got, your inventory sources. For example, you can even do inventory coverage percentage analysis, which we've done videos on before. We are tracking your inventory tools that are bringing in all this data. You're looking at your AMDB and you're looking at a delta on what's missing from where and building it out like that. But in terms of the manual data sets, these are definitely my top five tips for keeping that asset management database accurate or even getting it accurate in the first place, which can also be a massive struggle. As always, I really hope you've got something out of this video. And if you have, please don't forget to check down there if you have liked and subscribed. But until next time, when we see you next week for another ITAM related video here at the Sam Beast Consulting YouTube channel, as always, happy ITAMing. And happy AMDB updating.